go ahead and get started. Um, so we work to build community here in U-City, and that's even more important now that we're in a virtual environment. So let's just take a moment, and we're going to do a mindful moment. Um, that's what we're going to do today. Um, and what we do with our mindful moments um, is just take a moment just to breathe, um, just to exist. And um, there's no real way to do it or not do it. So we're just going to do a body scan. So if you'll engage me, indulge me for just a quick second, we'll get started with that. So as you think about where you are, um, you can close your eyes so you can keep them open. Bring your attention to your body. Again, if your eyes being closed, if that's comfortable for you, you can close them or you can keep them open. Notice your body seated wherever you're seated or if you're standing wherever you're standing, feeling the weight of your body on the chair, on the floor. Those of us who are just joining, we're doing a quick body scan. Take a few, de take a few deep breaths in. Blow the air out. One more time, breathe in. Blow the air out. Notice your feet on the floor or if you're on your back, your back on the floor or the bed, notice the sensations that you feel, the weight, the pressure, the heat of your body. Notice your legs, the pressure, heaviness, lightness. Bring your attention into your stomach area. There's a lot of emotion and energy in our core. And oftentimes we, we carry a lot of stuff there, our core and our shoulders and our neck. That's typically where we carry a lot of our tensions. If your stomach is tense or tight, let it soften. Take another deep breath in and blow that air back out. Notice your hands, notice your arms. Let your shoulders be soft. You may want to roll them backwards a few times, roll them forwards a few times. Notice your neck and your throat. Let them be soft, relax. Soften your jaw. Let your face and facial muscles be soft. Notice your whole body present. Take one more breath in. Take one more breath out. Think about everything that is clouding your mind, all of the stressors that you're carrying right now, all of the things that have happened since you awoke this morning, everything that you have to do the rest of the day. Take one more breath in and let all of that go by exhaling really, really long. All right, that is a body scan. Come back. That took about two minutes. Um, it's something that um, I encourage you to do. I do it often. If I'm just in the middle of the day, if I'm in my car and I'm waiting to go somewhere or ready, getting ready for a meeting, it's just a way to center. It takes a few seconds. So. Um, our students do it. They may not know what it's called, but they often have those mindful moments as well. So it's just important to kind of be centered. There's so much going on. So um, I'm going to give a quick update on how we're doing with our reentry and what some preliminary plans are as we consider what that looks like for you, city. Um, and then I'll just stop and answer questions. I don't have a lot of content today. Um, we are really looking at the metrics. Um, the metrics that I've shared before that we monitor frequently are the positivity rate, the transmission rate, and the um, number of overall new cases. So we are looking at that data um, daily, actually. Um, there is an effort with St. Louis University and Mercy Hospital to create um, more of a dashboard of data points for um, every district. So we'll have our zip code areas so we can look laser focused at what our district metrics are. Um, we will also, we're also working to build a um, simple website, not website, but a, a 
or a portion of our website that will be dedicated to metrics. We hope to get that up by next week. We're working to be very aggressive so that um, it is a transparent process of the number of cases that we have in, internally. Um, if there are any quarantine that need to happen, that you have that information. We have had instances of cases um, that were not directly related to the district, meaning we've had a couple of people who tested positive. They did not contract the, the uh, virus and in district, it was at a, another community then or something family oriented. So we have had to quarantine. Um, we have been very safe in that regard. Our team is working internally to identify what staff um, we can use to support some of the reentry efforts. So having more contact tracers that are trained and where their only job is to manage contact tracing. So those are things that um, we have underway. We have also um, started to have conversations with special school district about a potential return for our students that receive related services through special education. And we are um, working to prioritize those students so that um, we are clear on what a potential return for them could look like. We have also engaged our early childhood center and their staff around a return for um, Julia Goldstein. And so we are exploring that and um, we'll have more information very soon. Um, we're starting very small. We have always committed to our plan being safe, gradual, and kind. And we're gonna remain consistent with that. And so that gradual part is what we are exploring now. The um, numbers for younger students is very promising. We're not seeing the volume of spread, transmission, um, nor are we seeing the volume of cases. That does not mean that younger children are not becoming infected with COVID. That is not what I'm saying, but the numbers are very, very small compared to other um, populations. So we are exploring that. We still have our personal cabinet of many, many um, healthcare experts from the medical field, from the um, epidemiology field, from the um, mental health field, who give us a lot of insight, opinions, and research around our response. So we feel that we are overly informed. Um, it's so much information coming in and it's trying to, to shift through and, and sift through and filter that information and then extract it to do what's best for UCD. Um, many districts around us are reopening. Um, several will be reopening prior to um, first quarter. Um, ours is October 23rd, so many districts are opening um, sooner and they are again mostly starting gradual with younger students um, and so we are aligned to that um, our context is you see these context and so while we have the um, zip code data one piece that we have to consider in you city we have a mobile student population meaning they may not many of your children probably are in your home on the weekends they may have a quick pay date with someone that you trust with a mask. Our children go to grandma's house, they go to uncle's house, cousins, um, they're mobile and they're moving all around the region. And so we have to be cognizant of that when we think about our reentry. Our, our population is just not as stable as, as some. And that is a factor that we have to consider when we really can't control or contain who they are interacting with outside of school. Um, the other thing that I'll say is we have um, worked on the PPE side. Um, we will make the requirement whenever, even for the students who receive related services, anyone over, unless there is a, a disability that warrants them not to be able to wear a mask, we will have mask for every child kindergarten through um, 12. Um, we're not requiring mask for preschool. Um, some of them are already wearing masks their parents so they can certainly wear one if they choose to but that will not be a requirement for um, preschool students we have um, purchased additional um, hand sanitation cleaning stations that will be spread throughout our buildings they're mobile they're they're really neat and we also um, have worked with our custodial staff um, our contractor staff to add more staffing to um, our buildings so that we can ensure cleanliness and that rotation of more cleaning throughout the, um, the day and throughout the week. Our principals are working really hard um, to manage distance learning. We have a lot of learnings. Uh, one was that Chromebooks are non-existent right now. 
So thank you to all of the kindergarten families who were gracious in allowing us to swap out those devices for a tablet. We really appreciate that. It helped to meet the need for our older students. Um, I know it was a bit of an inconvenience, but um, everyone has been very open and, and supportive, so thank you. We also um, understand that our hotspots are a great resource, but for some families, it doesn't provide the bandwidth um, for connectivity. And so that is something that um, we are learning. And because we're all on an online platform, when we have multiple, fam multiple children in a home, even if they have two to three hotspots, it's just not enough data. So we are working to navigate that. We have a partnership with, I think it's Spectrum now, Charter or Spectrum, right? they change their name all the time. I think it's Spectrum. But that we have a partnership and some of our families' homes, our most needy families' homes, well, let me clarify, our parents who have the greatest need, because the parents, yeah, I have to work with my language. The parents that have the greatest need, um, they will get their homes hardwired. And so that process is underway. Um, but those are the learnings that we've had. We also have learned that some of our technology systems, our resources for distance learning, are major corporations, major book companies, major curricular resources, but they are navigating having everyone on an online platform. So we've had some challenges there as well. Um, that's where we are. We feel that in the midst of a pandemic, we still stand true to our vision of learning reimagine. We still are staying true to what we laid out in our um, reentry plan. And we view this as an opportunity to get better. We're getting better at what we do because that's our job. So um, this is very, very difficult. Um, honestly, the most difficult thing that I think most educators have engaged in in their career. Um, and we are still doing it with grace, um, with positivity, and with your children's best interests at the center of our efforts. So those are my quick updates. And I can address any questions that you may have or any comments. This isn't a quiet group. Hi, good morning. I'll start. Um, I had, I, I think we're still working through, and I'm sure you are too, through the Wednesday schedule and, um, and trying to figure out out if there are things that we can do with our Wednesday that are not just you know obviously I want my kids to get their schoolwork done and, and whatnot um, I think I had two questions about this one are we moving toward like a moment where we would say like all the work for the day is going to be posted by I don't know Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning um, and the second part to that question is, I'm just curious, what, what are the teachers and staff doing on that day? I know there's like some professional development stuff going on. Is that like, is that taking what's going on in the synchronous learning and trying to figure out how to improve? Like what, what's going on with, with that? So I'm going to put a principal on the spot if she doesn't mind and she's smiling so she knows. Rebecca O'Connell is the principal at Jackson Park. And um, many of the buildings, particularly elementary, are doing similar things. They may look a little different depending on their building, but she can unpack what that looks like and from an actual practical. Dr. Buchanan is on the call too, and he knows what we're doing. But I want you to hear from someone who's actually doing it every Wednesday and living it. So, Dr. O'Connell, do you mind sharing what those Wednesdays are? Sure, I don't mind one bit. Um, from a teacher and school personnel lens, um, the teachers are engaged in um, a balance of new learning. So. So again, trying to adjust to making the um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday sessions of quality for our students and understanding and using a lot of the virtual tools. So for example, um, the district has been extremely supportive in creating um, some adjustments with our curriculum, with our amended day, you know, just some things that we're having to really adjust from a school end of not having the students in person. Um, so for example, this upcoming Wednesday, our teachers will be fo focused on um, social studies in the morning um, and the virtual tools aligned to our social studies curriculum, as well as um, they're having sessions on either mathematics and math immersion or ELA um, and how they're attaining the standards virtually with our students um, from, you know, within our time frame, of course, but at our quarter of a glance. So that also so our teachers can be prepared to provide a quality um, parent-teacher conference um, and, 
and that they have a full understanding of how they're monitoring student learning. So that, that is this week. So for example, um, two weeks ago on a Wednesday, it was a full day of training for our teachers on our new um, assessment, which is FastBridge. So that will help us with our Lion time or asynchronous instruction um, of how we actually assess the students um, and place them into intervention and or enrichment groups. And so um, fortunately and unfortunately, there's a not a lot of new, there is a lot of new learning for the teachers and then we add the distance learning component to it. Um, if I could ask you a follow-up question, and the reason I wanted to join today was I wanted to hear what parents, what questions parents had um, so that I could start to work on them at a building level of communicating with my Jackson Park parents. So um, if you could explain just a smidge you had said about the posting of the assignments for when, are we sp speaking specifically towards Wednesdays or just in general? If you don't mind, I just want to make sure that I'm super clear with my staff as well at every turn. So if, if you could give me some insight, I can I can work to share that. Um, you know, elementary wide. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and first of all, I want to preface this by saying that people will have all sorts of needs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I understand that, um, you know, some parents might prefer like a full day's worth of work. Um, I don't, and I guess I, I think what I'm experiencing so far is that we're kind of falling in between that, right? Like where it's, not necessarily a full day's worth of work, but it's enough of a day's worth of work that, you know, maybe we can't go do an enrichment activity that we might want to do, which again, I know is probably possibly specific to my household, but, um, um, you know, just trying to get a sense of, you know, on Tuesday, am I going to know what Wednesday looks like so I can figure out if there's something else I need to do to fill the time on Wednesday. And actually, I think that might be a universal parent question, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're looking at, head like what am I going to have to do on Wednesday with my child you know what kind of time you know free time will my child have that I might have to fill with another activity I just I think that you know that kind of thing would be helpful to know so if I could just ask another clarifying question sure. so are you looking more for a um a um a not a schedule per se, but um, just some very specifics so that you could begin to create a routine. So for example, yes. if you knew, okay, I'm going to have 20 minutes of um, you know, math content, I'm going to have you know, 25 minutes on the ELA software, I'm going to have, if you kind of had those parameters going leading into Wednesday for every Wednesday, that would be helpful. Yes, that would help me. Okay. okay. Yeah, because right now Wednesday is just, it's. And I understand, like there are other things going on that day, and I know that it, it's in that schedule because of because we were hoping to start hybrid. So I and I think it's like a good idea that we have preserved that schedule. But um, yeah, just as a parent, it's hard to plan. Like it's hard to have any structure on that day, and so it's like a little bit like you lose momentum midweek, and yeah, and my, my kids are then like don't want to do anything. <laughs> so I don't know if that's helpful. No, it's it's yeah, I appreciate it. I, I can add to that too. Um, we've had conversations with our elementary school uh, teachers on the parent cafes that they're having about being like, you should spend 20 minutes on this assignment or you should spend 40 minutes on this assignment. So then we know if our kid is sufficiently learning on that platform or if they're blowing it off. <laughs> essentially no I get it <laughs> yeah. we can certainly yeah. add more I think we're clear now on what is needed um and we can certainly add more supports for those parents that that plan um that, that need a plan and um you know we we did want to continue with the hybrid um when we so in the event that we do return so that that system is in place. We are also, um, there was a survey that I did mention that went out that closes on Friday to determine your interest in return to in-person instruction when it's safe. So we really need you to complete that. We only had about 400 um, responses so far, 374 to be exact. And so we, we need to get more feedback from parents so that we can plan. We do not feel that it would be in our best interest to have teachers trying to do both. 
Um, so our goal would be to have um, some teachers staying in the hybrid in person and then um, based on the numbers, some supporting the uh, online students. We, that, and this is another reason that we get a lot of questions about why are they working in teams? This was another reason for teams. Um, we didn't want to assign a teacher yet when we you know, knew that there was a point that that structure would change. Um, also, being brutally honest, the team approach helps us deal with the substitute issue. So we don't have to secure a sub if a teacher happens to be absent. That is something that we are uh, problem solving for when we do return um, by hiring our own subs to be full-time UCD staff members so that they're not shared across districts because that would just defeat the purpose of trying to contact trace um, so those are and they will also be assigned to a building so they won't be traveling all over the district so those are some things that we are doing um, but i know that we have a right now issue because they're virtual and so we're trying to mitigate those while planning for the future so thank you for your question trisha and we'll certainly share that with the other principals um, and i'll ask rebecca if she could share that with her colleagues and then we can um, i'm sure that each building will be working to get more parameters but that's a perfect ask it makes sense kelly Hi. Raven, I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Keely, Raven, whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I wanted to, you know, I, again, I always appreciate the opportunity to have dialogue with, with you guys. And so thank you for being available and making the time for us. Um, I wanted to um, also ask about Wednesdays, sort of two parts. One is um, part of what the parent was just saying, you know, just about knowing assignments ahead of time just in point of clarification for me i have a similar i guess need for that but mostly just to know what the assignments are like um because for example on wednesday as i was wrapping up my daughter's day with assignments some more trickled in for the day and so i was like oh <laughs> kind of told you you'd be done <laughs> so um you know just for for us to know just that just before Wednesday is fine with me just so it's in there and we can look at it even the day before um, and not necessarily like how much time it should take like a brief glance is fine um, but then also I wanted to know I remember a discussion like over the summer about Wednesday being more of a project stem kind of based day and I'm wondering is that something that's still on the table, are we moving away from that? But just because my understanding of what it was isn't what I'm seeing now, and maybe I was misunderstanding, but I just wanted to, to ask for clarification because I didn't know if I was confused or not. You were not confused. Um, okay. Early on, we were looking at hiring um, four to five teachers to just do some of the project-based work on the days that students were not in session in the hybrid. Once we decided to go virtual, we had to pivot from that plan. Um, as we continue to progress, um, my hope is that you will begin to see more STEM activities. Uh, we are working with many agencies to provide that. Our students will be experiencing a virtual uh, field trips at the Magic House. Um, some of them will have virtual experiences at the Science Center. So we're trying to find ways to bring those um, project-based STEAM type of activities into the virtual environment but yes that is we had to pivot from that um, when we had all of our teachers working in the virtual environment so you're not you did hear it um, but we tweaked it prior to rolling out the final plan for the elementary school the high school has a similar model but the elementary school we did um, tweak it a bit and yeah other questions or comments? I could keep going. <laughs> I have another one. Um, I wanted okay, to ask. Some wait time and let's see if anyone else has a question and then circle back. No, that's fine. Okay. But go ahead, Keely. Go ahead. It's on okay. this. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to ask um, about, like, I know assessments are sort of happening and, and some of the things that I observe, like with my daughter and things that I know that she knows may not be able to, um, I guess, be realized virtually by like software. Mm -hmm. So keeping that in mind, I'm sure, you know, other parents probably noticing something or other, you know, I know nothing is perfect. Um, but I wanted to ask, what's the vision, or maybe it's not there yet, just for what um, report cards will look like, like how that, how they'll be different since we're in a 
different time and different yeah. learning environment. So the goal is mastery um, always, and even the content that students are engaged in now is based on standards. So that's the starting point. And then the kind the work that they do is, uh, is designed to help them achieve uh, mastery of those standards. So the feedback that you will receive via progress reports which are coming out soon and then report cards is more standards based and it's not it's just tell where your child is um, progressing where there may be gaps it is a virtual environment and we understand that it's not a um, perfect scenario but by the engagement that the teachers have with students of course having conferences with you at parent conferences and then um, looking at the, the product with what the students produce will give us a gauge of where they are. We understand that an assessment online, um, even one-on-one, -on -one, the reliability is not 100%. Um, so we're taking that into account. So the assessment and the feedback process is not punitive, but it is. Um, it should be designed to help you and help the school with your child and their growth. So knowing um, what areas, where are they strong? What areas um, do we have gaps? and so that um, the learning can be differentiated so that it best meets your child's needs. First quarter, I'm asking for patience. Um, this is our first time having um, progress reports and report cards um, in this environment. And so um, it won't be a perfect process, but we are working to keep the main components of teaching and learning that are deemed to be best practice. And assessment is at the core of it. Um, it is at the core, not assessment for, you know, high stakes purposes, but assessment to help students grow. And depending on your child's age in elementary school, middle school, or high school, we want them to be a part of that process too. We want them to be able to talk to you about where they're strong um, and looking at their strengths and then what um, areas they may need support. Again, not punitively, but from a lens of growth. Hi, Dr. Hardin Bartley. Um, so, this is, you know, as you know, our first year in the district, and as we enter flu season and are contemplating the return, I'm curious, like, what percentage of um, children in the district take a religious exemption on vaccines, and if you can share that information. That's a great question. So, um, I can share the percentage. It is very small. Um, I can get that. I don't have it now. Um, but it is a very, very, I, I want to say it might be um, it's a very small number. But I can get that from you from our student services department. Um, we did have a immunization clinic last week. Where we had about 50 families that came through. We are also, um, again, not medical experts. Um, pediatrician um, and that we should have um, recommend the students get a, a flu shot of course we can't require that we're also hosting um, several um, well actually one wellness fair soon so that all of our staff have the opportunity to, to get a flu shot so that it's easily accessible but we can get that percentage and share that with uh, families but it's uh, it's I'm sure it's in the single digit they come to me because I, I can't, they, you can't deny them, but I have to approve them, which is one of those policies. I'm like, why do we have a policy about a law that, you know, but anyway, so I have to approve them and I can count probably on one hand the number that I had last year. So we can get that number. Okay, thanks. I think it would just help inform our choice of mm -hmm. returning or going virtual um, or remaining virtual. Then, um, sorry, I just had it and I'm obviously getting a little bit distracted by this guy. Um, the oh yeah this summer you had mentioned about possibly partnering with WashU on their rapid test um where is what's that looking like as you're contemplating returning yeah so we um their test has been approved um we have worked tried to work to get in on that they are not giving it to schools yet um they're starting with adults um because that's the population that is high as a risk and um, but we are um, partnering with another um, 
form of WashU with an assessment that has not been FDA approved yet. So um, we are working with them and the process now is for our students to partner with them to learn about that process and more about the science of it. And our hope is that once it is FDA approved because we have established this partnership and it's a more affordable test, um, it's around 10 to $30 an assessment. So we're, we're hoping that we can get on um, that, that partnership. The rapid tests are available. They're just not um, yet available to schools. And so um, they are prioritizing. And then also, it's not just St. Louis, they're kind of, it's all over the country that people are looking for these quick test. We have um, pushed with uh, Spring Schmidt, who is the interim director of um, the County Health Department, the, to really get rapid testing um, in, in schools for that reason, just for our own population. Um, so I think it's resources and need and the demand. And the demand is not in the school space. Um, demand is with older, you know, more with adults. And um, of course, our essential workers. So those are the ones who are accessing seeing those rapid tests now. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Veronica, I just wanted to remind everybody about Pershing's event on Friday. Um, it's a virtual music event. It's sort of in replacing last year's Jazz and More Under the Stars. Um, you can look in Peach Jar and register for that event. There's a mariachi band that's scheduled to perform in honor of um, Hispanic Heritage Month um, and a lot more. So uh, they're really hoping people will join. And I also wanted to mention that um, Tomorrow is our mindfulness uh, event for our parent cafe. And we have a, an excellent professional who is going to lead all the participants in a great mindfulness exercise, similar to what um, Dr. Harden Bartley started with at the beginning of the, the today's uh, Zoom. But it'll be an hour long and I'm here. It's uh, sure to bring relaxation. And so we encourage you to join that as well. Hi there. Hi. Um, I just have a question. Um, hopefully my screen's acting funny and it has my daughter's name, but I'm Danielle Beck. And um, I've got one at Flint or two at Flint and one at Julia Goldstein. And I was just curious, um, you said that you, if they start back at Julia Goldstein, they won't be, be required to wear masks. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And what is the, is that just based on research that like, that they don't need them? Um, it's the transmission rates that we're seeing. Um, and we are talking three to five year olds. So we're going to encourage families to wear them. And we feel that the class sizes are gonna be extremely small. Um, they are gonna be close to each other because mm -hmm. it's, it's preschoolers. So you're not, I mean, we can socially distance them as best we can. Um, one of our challenges was the the three three four year olds um, being in those spaces. So we want to certainly support um, families. We've also looked at data from other childcare centers that have been open all summer, and and their mask requirement is not there. Um, one that we look okay. closely is University City Children's Center, which is right in mm -hmm. U City. Um, I'm on their board, so I visited, I've seen their operation, I, I have their plan, um, and I'm, I've, they have had zero cases, and this doesn't mean that we won't have any cases, but they've had zero since July. Um, they, have, they did have to quarantine some staff from outside events, but nothing was related to the school. Um, and, but again, to your point, um, we are not in the flu season, and we know what happens in flu season. So um, that may be a need to reevaluate that, but the centers that we have looked at um, that have been open successfully do not have a mask requirement. Okay, thank or you. Okay.
Hi, I came up with another question, which is what is curriculum night going to look like, like this year? It, um, it varies by building. Um, the intent is to give overview of our resources that we have. Um, of course, that's going to be focused on the online learning. Um, the buildings are offering tours, um, particularly for new families um, to have to see the building, but um, it will be very different, mostly virtual with some in-person option. And each building will be sharing specific details about what their schedule looks like and what their, their evening will look like in that building. Any other questions? So um, that's where we are. We are, um, you know, staying the course. Um, I'm glad to hear parent cafes at buildings and interactions meetings with buildings because, um, you know, you get a lot of information from your child's principal and working with, with your teachers. We will continue um, the course with our parent cafes as well as Zoom meetings um, just to get a district perspective, but those building exchanges are invaluable to supporting you and your children. Um, so if there are no more questions or comments, I want to give you the gift of time and thank you for joining us. Oh, um, are we requiring staff? We can't require it um, to take the flu shot. We are highly encouraging um, staff to take to um, get a flu shot. And if you haven't gotten one, um, I would suggest you try to get it soon because they are in high demand. So um, very high demand. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.